AMD today announced the arrival of its 4,000 CPUs, at least in naming. These aren't Zen 3 parts, it's what AMD has done with APUs in the past, where it's taking the next generation in name, but sticking with the current generation of silicon and design. So these are functionally the laptop components being brought forward into desktop. They'll be OEM first, but there's going to be something in the APU line for 400 and 500 series boards later for DIY enthusiasts. And then separately, there's also a line of Zen Plus Athlon 3000 series CPUs that'll be coming to market as well. We won't be showing many of AMD's internal benchmark numbers for this particular news video because, well, this masterpiece was among the slides where the scale starts at zero and ends at six, yet looks equal to 92%, but we'll be talking about the specs of the CPUs coming to market. Before that, this video is brought to you by Arctic Cooling and its Liquid Freezer 2 line. Arctic is actively restocking its Liquid Freezer 2 coolers that rank among the top performers for CPU coolers right now, including on Ryzen CPUs. The Liquid Freezer 2 series is focused on high thermal performance and value, featuring a blackout design and including a VRM fan mounted on top of the pump block to help provide airflow over neighboring VRM heat sinks. Arctic has also started selling its P12-120 case fans. Learn more at the links in the description below. The most immediate news we need to address is that these parts are coming to market for OEMs first, and SIs are not system integrators, they're not included in what AMD defines as an OEM, but DIY enthusiasts and desktop builders will be getting some APU in the future. It doesn't sound like it's going to be exactly these parts, but AMD did give us a quote where they said, uh, while we cannot disclose our entire roadmap, there are next-gen APUs coming for both 400 and 500 series motherboards. As for the 3000G series parts, we didn't hear on the call whether AMD's planning to bring these to DIY in the immediate future, but uh, our understanding is that currently they might also be OEM only at least for the outset. The arrival of the parts for shelf availability is expected to be August of this year. So this is when you'll see companies like Dell, Lenovo, HP, and Acer, which are among the uh, conglomerates that AMD considers OEMs. That's when they'll be carrying desktops with the 4000G series mobile components that have been upfitted for desktop use. That mostly means higher power consumption targets or permissions and uh, some changes to the clocks and overall tuning to the parts, but they are, it's the same silicon ultimately, and that's what's moving forward. System integrators, if you don't know the nuance, that would be companies like CyberPower, you have iBuyPower, uh, NDXT BLD, which we just did a piece on, Origin, Main Gear, those are system integrators or SIs, and the OEMs are the ones that are getting these components immediately. Now this is where AMD needs to go right now. A couple of years ago at CES, we spoke with James Pryor, who's a former AMD employee, now works at Sci-5 and actually does work at, uh, with the Thermo Siphon team as well, if you've probably seen that cooler out there. But we spoke with him several years ago, and the point he made at CES that year, which we reported on, was that AMD's next big objective, this was probably just before the 400 series chipset launch, was to start pushing more into OEM systems. And that's because of the market size. AMD grew explosively in the PC DIY space, but at some point they're going to hit a cap where they can't really grow any further. And now the companies like, well, Intel, obviously, are going to be the ones that take most of the OEM space. So AMD has been slowly pushing into that. It's a significant market. It's important. It's not PC DIY, but it is a large money maker for these companies for the silicon companies, and they need that backbone in order to keep growing an enthusiast as well. Uh, so AMD didn't have formal numbers that it could share on the call with the exact market size split between what it does for PC DIY sales versus OEM sales, but it did share some numbers that the company's representative uh, dug up through IDC, JPR, and Mercury reports, and the tentative figure that was given to us was that the market size is about four to five times larger for OEM systems as opposed to PC DIY. Speaking with motherboard manufacturers, we've learned that most of them do under uh, four to 8% maximum for their enthusiast motherboard component sales as opposed to uh, selling to companies that integrate them into systems. So that gives you another idea as well, but that's gonna vary significantly depending on the manufacturer. Some of them OEM for companies and take their name off, things like that. Either way though, it's supposed to come out August, 2020, 
for on-shelf availability. Now, as for the specs tables, these are pretty easy to get through. We'll start with the 3000G Athlon update, since in some ways those might be more interesting than the 4000G series. That said, without pricing, we're not really sure right now which one's the most interesting to look at. The Athlon 3000G CPUs adopt Intel's gold and silver naming, just like AMD took Intel's naming for everything else, and Athlon Gold 3150G, 3150GE, and 3050GE are the parts coming out. The Athlon 3150G and GE seem to be different by about 100 megahertz in maximum clock advertised and 30 watts in the TDP figure. Remember that AMD TDP is calculated with this formula. TDP in watts equals T case degrees Celsius minus T ambient degrees Celsius divided by uh, heatsink fan theta CA, which we explained in a previous piece on AMD TDP that we'll link below. TDP is equal to T case minus T ambient in that formula divided by thermal resistance of the heatsink and fan. So remember that power is not anywhere in that equation other than the number that comes out the other side, which has been defined by AMD. The specs are four cores and four threads for the 3150G at 3.9 gigahertz with six megabytes of total cache and an AMD Vega GPU, not Navi. The unlocked Athlon 3000G previously used 14 nanometer process on Zen 1 and was a two core, four thread configuration that could commonly overclock to about 3.9 gigahertz. So the Zen Plus cores in the new Athlon CPUs in the G and GE series will benefit from potentially higher clocks, assuming any of them are unlocked, or that motherboards break the rules like they did previously when MSI circumvented things. Pricing was not disclosed for these, so we'd assume they're OEM first, but we're hoping that they might come to DIY. The 3150GE is 100 megahertz slower, while the 3050GE is two cores, four threads, and 3.4 gigahertz with five megabytes cache instead. For the Ryzen 4000G series, that lineup looks like this chart. The 4700G is the top SKU at eight cores, 16 threads, and 3.6 gigahertz to 4.4 gigahertz boost. Obviously that 4.4 number is not all core, and it's going to be the single thread boosting or single core boosting that's dependent on the application and silicon quality or fitness. The CPUs run 12 megabytes cache at the high end and eight Vega cores clocked to 2100 megahertz. For comparison, the 3400G previously advertises a 1400 megahertz speed on the AMD official specs table today. The 4600G is next down the list at six cores, 12 threads following the other X600 naming scheme like the 36, and then it runs at 4.2 gigahertz max or 3.7 gigahertz all core base. Cache drops by one megabyte here and integrated graphics get slimmed down to seven cores at 1900 megahertz. The 4300G is a four core, eight thread solution with six graphics cores, still slower. And then we get into the GE line. The G versus GE naming is differentiated by TDP with the GE solutions at 35 watt TDP instead. AMD distributed some renders of the CPUs, but did not distribute any die shots at the time of filming. That said, in taking Q&A on the press call, AMD noted that these 4000G solutions will be single die silicon rather than the multi-chiplet approach of desktops currently used. These are, in every way, mobile components that have been brought to desktop and OEM first. This means that they also follow the PCIe specs of mobile units, including native Gen 3 and no native Gen 4 PCIe. And finally, for the 4000G parts, those are going to be the Zen 2 cores, so that's the modern 7 nanometer parts. Now again, we won't show many, if any, of the marketing slides from AMD on the performance numbers. We try to avoid first-party performance figures in general. But uh, in this instance, we'll give some basics that they claimed against their own parts previously. So AMD is claiming a 20 to 25% uplift in single threaded performance over last year's 3400G four core eight thread part with the higher end 4000G parts now. And they also posted some 3D Mark Time Spy numbers, which is theoretically its attempt at showing a non Cinebench gaming synthesis type of number. And Time Spy can be really useful. Uh, as of right now, AMD has not answered our questions as to what that means. So Time Spy has several different scores. There's the total score, which is a combination of CPU and graphics. This is probably the one they're talking about. Then there's CPU score. There's GT1 score, GT2 score, CPU FPS, GT1 FPS, GT2 FPS, uh, and then you have a combined result. So likely they've taken the combined result for their 19% higher number, and that would be the one that would produce the, the largest percentage increase. So that's why we'd assume that. But uh, it would also make sense because on the APU side, if they're running with integrated graphics, then 
that might be a comparison that AMD would want to make. For other internal benchmarks, AMD provided a lot of them, but they were all percentage, so relative scaling, no hard numbers given. Uh, we don't want to show these competitive slides versus Intel and AMD because AMD didn't have any 10 series Intel parts in the listing for some reason. The company claims that it has been unable to obtain Intel 10th uh, gen components. It's not really a generation, but uh, 10 series components and therefore it ran the 9000 series. While this is kind of funny because Intel has had shortages, we've had no trouble buying about four of them at this point. And we have a lot less money than AMD, which is a multi-billion dollar company. So not really a good excuse. They should have just pretended like they didn't want to compare against it. Either way, it looks like it is a favorable comparison for AMD 10th series or 9000 series because, well, uh, Intel is quite behind <laughs> in the graphics department when you're talking integrated graphics. And that's ultimately what they're marketing towards here. So Andy is trying to push towards that 1080p capabilities without going to a DGPU. As far as benchmarks for these parts, we, uh, well, they're coming out in August, so it'll be a little while, but we're planning to get some of the CPUs either through contacts in Taiwan and China or uh, through purchasing OEM systems once they're on the shelf. So you'd certainly check back for our numbers if you want third-party validation of some of the claims, if maybe you're interested in getting them, or just because it's kind of fun to see how it does, and eventually that stuff will come in some form to DIY. As for the last bit of news, there was a Ryzen Pro announcement as well in the 4000 series. This is where AMD has really been trying to make some moves this year, where as we saw with our news video on AMD Threader for Pro, AMD is trying to push it to that professional market that's below epic tier of customer. And that normally means more targeting of security features. It tends to be like with Intel, you talk about vPro. So I start talking more about uh, additional security features, VM options, things like that, different licensing, depending on which company you're talking about, and uh, different warranty options as well. But AMD is trying to expand there with the Ryzen 4000G Pro line on the desktop side. And it's spinning off the 4000G series into a 4750G, 4650G, and 4350G all of which are similar in spec to the previous parts, but predicated on security and power efficiency claims. So then that 50 designator helps show if it's a pro line part. And actually you saw the same thing for the most part with the threader pronouncements recently. And the uh, G versus GE, depending on which part you're looking at, that's often the designation of 65 watt TDP versus 35 watt TDP for the GE lines, at least in the 3000 series. So that's gonna be it for AMD's news. Pretty quick and simple stuff. We'll try and get these and work on them. It should be a fun content opportunity. Uh, AMD is almost certainly not sampling to media because it's not selling the CPUs uh, retail to DIY, but we'll also keep an eye out for that APU part they were talking about. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. And we'll see you all next time.